In spite of its small geographical size, Puerto Rico boasts a great variety and diversity of natural resources located in the coastal zone. Coastal resources are a source of job opportunities and raw material for hundreds of thousands of people living on our island. Awareness of the great variety of recreational, tourist, commercial, industrial, and agricultural opportunities that our coastal zones have to offer implies the responsibility for their preservation and wise use. We invite you to watch the Coastal Zones of Puerto Rico, Present Uses, and Future Challenges. The coasts are highly dynamic and complex spaces of transition located between two domains, the sea and the land. Our island owes its socioeconomic development in great part to these coasts, where we can find myriad uses and activities that directly impact this development. However, and as a result, deep conflicts and stiff competition have surfaced over the use of the land within the coastal zone. The coasts of Puerto Rico are divided into eight sections, the north, south, northeast, southeast, west, southwest, the northwest, and adjacent islands. Each sector contributes to the social and economic development of the island. All sectors are of great ecological importance and as such must be protected to ensure their preservation. The coastal zone of Puerto Rico extends one kilometer inland and nine nautical miles out to the sea. These limits have been established to protect the natural coastal systems as well as our territorial waters and the seabed and marine life underneath these waters. They also include the islands of Vieques, Culebra, and Mona, as well as all the smaller islands and keys within the jurisdictional limits of Puerto Rico. The north coast is the most densely populated area on the island. The topography here is mostly flat with karstic hills in the interior. The deepest rivers and the most extensive underground water system are found in this sector. These water sources have contributed to the establishment and development of the pharmaceutical and chemical industries in this area. The largest port and the largest airport on the island are on the north coast. The largest mangrove forest on the island are found in the northeast sector. There are also several saltwater lagoons. This zone is favorable to the proliferation of coral reefs that form a chain of small islands that includes Culebra and Culebrita and its northeast end. The northeast sector is very attractive for aquatic recreation activities and these activities enhance tourism and increase the demand for space for the construction of tourist resorts along this coast. In the southeastern area, rocky coasts alternate with alluvial valleys, beach plains, and small unfrequented beaches. The former Roosevelt Roads, Navy Base, and the Ceiba Forest are located in this sector. The diversity of natural resources in this area offers huge development potential but these resources must be protected and preserved. The south coast is mostly arid land with low-lying alluvial plains and a small mountain ridge between the Tallaboa sector and Punta Cuchara. The rest of the shore is made up of coastal flats or mangrove swamps. 
natural bays, and other resources have contributed to the development of heavy industrial projects in this zone. The southwest coast is very rich in natural resources and a good example of social economic development. Some of the most valuable resources in this area include the Guanica dry forest, the Parquera mangroves, and its beaches and reefs. The unique topography of this area is an important factor in the formation and preservation of its coral reefs and bioluminescent bays. Low rainfall levels and the absence of deep rivers also contribute in great measure to the development of these resources. This is one of the coastal areas of the island with the greatest abundance of fishing on the island. Agriculture, the tourist industry, and recreational activities add to the socio-economic development of this zone. In addition, its navigable waters promote the development of ports and bays. Any activity or development on the shore side is at risk from weather events such as cyclonic surges and coastal flooding. The west coast, like the southwest coast, is of great agricultural value. The excellent access to the sea in this coastal area offers great potential for industrial development. The city of Mayagüez, the third most populous city on the island, is located in the coastal area. Mayagüez also has the third largest port on the island. One salient feature of the northwest area is a range of hills and a line of cliffs running along the coastline. Some of the cliffs are 300 feet high, which are a great tourist attraction for the beauty of its views. The high waves along the coast make the beaches very attractive for surfers. This sport has gained international fame in the beaches of Aguadilla, Isabela, and Rincón. Also in this area is the Rafael Hernández Borinquen Airport, which has the longest runway in the Caribbean. Besides the main island, Puerto Rico is composed of a number of very small islands, islets, and keys, with natural areas and habitats of great value for their wildlife. Included among these are the islands of Mona, Vieques, and Culebra, as well as other smaller ones such as Caja de Muertos, Desecheo, the Parguera Keys, and the Cordillera of the coast of Fajardo. One of the salient features of these islands are their beaches, known for their white sand and crystal clear waters, protected as they are by the coral reefs. The coastal zone of Puerto Rico is also rich in historical monuments and archaeological sites that are evidence of the different cultures that have inhabited our archipelago. The indigenous groups are an example of cultures that were able to use our coastal resources in a sustainable manner. Because of the strategic geographical position, Puerto Rico was considered an important military bastion in the Caribbean during the Spanish colonial period. This is the reason for the massive forts and ramparts built at several sites along the coastline. There are also other large structures such as lighthouses, churches, fortifications, and a great variety of buildings of historical interest. At present, some 70% of the population and approximately 40% of the urban land in Puerto Rico is found in coastal municipalities. The reason for this high number is the need to have access to the sea and to ports, as well as the availability of flatland and maritime resources. The coastal zone is used to establish industries as well as for urban development, agriculture, tourism, and recreation, all of which necessary for the economic and social development of Puerto Rico. These uses 
have had both positive and negative impacts on the development of our coasts. Por una parte, esto nos beneficia en términos de producción agrícola, intercambio de mercancías y otras actividades que dependen de estos cuerpos de agua, pero también esta proximidad nos hace susceptibles a riesgos costeros, a riesgos de inundaciones y otros eventos naturales. In terms of utility infrastructure, there are five electric energy generating plants in the coastal zone, 31 electric energy transmission towers, 178 kilometers of main highways. The wastewater treatment plants used in the island are in this area too. As to business infrastructure, we have the international airport, seven regional airports, and eight seaports, the most important of which are the port of San Juan and the port of Ponce. There are several forms of industrial developments in the coastal zone. Thermoelectric plants are greatly dependent on the coast to generate energy. Their operations require oil derivates, natural gas, and coal, all of which are imported by sea. Beaches and coastal waters are directly affected by this industry. Wastewater outfalls solid waste disposal and oil spills are the most common causes. The demand for construction aggregates has increased steadily over the years. In the past, massive sand extraction caused the disappearance of many dunes. The loss of these dunes has resulted in beach erosion, putting many of our coastal communities at risk during periods of storms High wave action and hurricanes. El proceso de planificación y de diseño de nuestras futuras eh, ocupaciones de los suelos costeros tiene que ser uno que integre todas estas variables que garantice la sustentabilidad y la salud de los procesos naturales que ocurren en la costa y por otra parte, obviamente, que protejan vida, propiedad, salud y la calidad de vida en general. Esto es lo que denominamos un desarrollo sostenible. The rapid and unrestrained development of this zone has impacted the ecological systems in the area. Poor planning of the highway system has been a determinant factor in the location of urban and industrial developments. Today, the highway system borders and joins the coastline through the island coastal plains. Agricultural development has also impacted the coastal zone. The more fertile valleys and great part of the arable land of the island can be found in the coast. Tourism is a strategic industry for the economy of Puerto Rico. Most tourist attractions are located in the coastal areas of the island. The investment associated with this activity exceeds $3 billion. A large number of cruise ships and commercial vessels use our ports on a daily basis. The demands of the local population, coupled with those of the tourism industry, have brought about the need to provide spaces for recreation. The coasts of Puerto Rico offer a variety of recreational opportunities for the general public, such as recreation centers, public beaches, and resorts. The Coastal Zone Management Program of the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources is developing of plans to mitigate the risks posed by flooding, earthquakes, erosions, and hurricanes, among others. The department also contributes to scientific studies that seek to increase our knowledge and the means to respond in case of these types of events. What's more, ecological damages can translate into risks to life and property. Other human activities, such as the river sand extraction, deforestation, dredging, 
and construction works have contributed to the acceleration of the erosion process along our coastlines. This erosion produces coral reef sedimentation and property and environmental damage. Flooding events occur when rivers and creeks overflow because they cannot cope with great amounts of rainfall. Flooding can also occur as a result of cyclonic surges associated with windstorms and hurricanes. Out of the 300,000 acres of flood-prone land, about 200,000 are found in the coastal zones of Puerto Rico. The Coastal Zone Management Program promotes a public policy of stewardship over the planning and development process in Puerto Rico. We have evidence that infrastructure developments close to the sea and some tropical ecosystems are exposed to natural hazards to a greater or lesser degree. The responsibility to preserve our environment is ours. However, we will only win the battle if we strive to learn and to appreciate the true worth of our natural resources. We must acknowledge that the coastal zone is an important area which contributes both to the beauty of our land and to the economic development. The risks are very real and the consequences very serious. Nature is giving us warning signals. We must act now.